Coming up on episode 50 of Create If Writing, we're talking about where to find your perfect audience. Where are they? I can't go back to sleep, it's almost light. These restless thoughts have cut me up again tonight. Hello and welcome to Create If Writing. I'm your host, Kirsten Oliphant, and this is the podcast for writers, bloggers, and creatives who are trying to build an online platform without being smarmy. Smarmy. <clears throat> smarmy. So that's what we do here. <laughs> we try to build an audience and find your perfect people. And we are at the end of a four part series on how to find your perfect audience audience. We talked first about knowing your why and why that actually is important to know your perfect audience. And then we created an ideal reader profile where I have a freebie. And if you go to creativewriting.com forward slash 047, you can get a great downloadable that has basically a guide that will help you go into way more detail than you ever thought you could on your ideal reader. So in episode 48, we talked about finding your current audience because sometimes your current and your ideal do not match up and then you have to make a choice as to what to do. If you stick with writing what that current audience likes and make that your new ideal audience or if you slowly shift away to writing what your ideal wants or if you kind of pull the rug out from under your current readers and do some kind of pivot to reach other different people. So those are the first three, and today is where to find your ideal readers. So actually going out and getting them and bringing them back to your site. Before we get to that, a few quick things. So we're on episode 50, which means we're almost at episode 52, which normally means you've been around a year if you're a weekly podcast, but I actually missed some because last year in the summer, I worked for another podcast, the Business to Blogger podcast, and just couldn't keep up both in the summer. Summer I don't know how I did it last summer with the podcast. This summer, it's it's just a challenge. So in any case, uh, I missed a few, but coming up on episode, I don't know if I'm gonna do it 51 or 52 because we're at a good breaking point now. I might do episode 51. I wanna do kind of a celebration and a look back at the first year of podcasting or the first 50 so episodes. And then after that, we're going to do something else exciting, which is I am going to bring back in the Business to Blogger podcast because Business to Blogger is now gone and I have the audio files and permission to use them. And so I'm really excited to bring you a bunch of really great interviews that were stellar that I just didn't want to be lost because they're with great people, have great content. So that's what we're going to move into through, I'm not sure how long, I'm not sure that I'm using all of them. So that's what's going to be the next phase. I'll do a new little intro to the episodes, um, not the one I used before probably, to cut out all the business to blogger stuff because that's not where it's going to live anymore. It's going to live here with my people, with you guys. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, just so you know, I am sending out a survey this week in my email and I would love for you to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the Quick Fix. It comes out Thursdays. I give good links, resources, and more, and uh, I feel like it's a pretty valuable email for you guys. If not, you can always unsubscribe. That's the secret to email. Shouldn't be a secret, but there you go. You can always unsubscribe. But I'm going to send out a survey kind of asking feedback for what you guys want from me. Um, I'm, you know, not able to do a whole lot during the summer, but I have some plans and ideas for the fall and what I'm going to be doing. And it really helps if I know what you want, what you really, really want, because that's... uh, that's what I want to do is what you guys actually want. So if you're not already subscribed, you just go to creativewriting.com forward slash subscribe and you can sign up. Last note before we dive in, if you are not a part of our Facebook community, and I say community and I really mean it, I don't just mean a Facebook group. I really feel like it's super special. I'm almost like hesitant to tell people about it. You know, when you have something really cool and you kind of are like, I don't know if I want to share this because it's so great. I don't want to ruin it. But we have a really great community going on at Facebook. And if you want to join us and be a part of a community, not just a link drop or, you know, nobody talking or silence or awkward stuff or people being smarmy, then you can find our community where there is zero smarm. And uh, that's at createifwriting.com forward slash community. Let's dive into where to find your perfect audience. And a lot of this is kind of dealing with traffic, but it's targeted traffic, right? Because if you write a blog, Back in the old days when I first started blogging in, what, 2005, 2007, 
It really was. You would write it and people would come. There weren't that many blogs. I don't really know how people found one another, but they did. And I constantly was having new people find my blog without promoting. In fact, social media wasn't really around like it is now in all the forms. I think I was on Facebook and MySpace, but people didn't share their blog posts there. That was like not a thing. So people would just literally type in the name, or at least I did, of the blog they wanted to read and see if there was anything new. And that's kind of how I know I used to read blogs. But that doesn't work anymore, at least not for most people. I probably do still have a few people that read that way, that when they want to know what's up, they just type in the name of my blog and see what I've been doing. For the most part now, it's very crowded and you can either be really great at SEO, which is search engine optimization, which involves keywords and a whole lot of other deep level stuff to get your blog ranking higher in Google search algorithms. A lot of fancy words right there. So you can be good at that, which will help people find your site, or you can go and find them and bring them back. And so that's what we're going to talk about today but a little bit more targeted because again, remember, we're trying to find your ideal people. So I'm gonna give you some suggestions. I'm breaking them into two. We're gonna talk about platforms and we're gonna talk about tools. And the blog post that goes along with this, you guys, it's insane. It's like 2,500 words. And so you definitely wanna go and read it if you're a visual person. I mean, I like, I love listening to podcasts and it's interesting. I feel like I'm learning in a new way because I'm a visual person. But I also learned through podcasts, so I don't know. But the show notes are very long, very detailed, have some links in them and a couple screenshots of things. Uh, So definitely head over there. It's going to be at creativewriting.com forward slash zero five zero. So let's start with the uh, platforms. And a lot of these are going to be really obvious. So I'm not going to really spend a ton of time, but just say a few things. So the first one I want to talk about is Facebook groups. And I just talked about my Facebook group. And, uh, you know, it's the thing with Facebook groups. I feel like once pages died and became kind of the land of pay to play, I mean, they're not dead, but the organic reach is dead. A lot of people have turned to groups. And I know at some point Facebook is going to do something similar to groups. And so I just, oh, I don't want it to happen, (laughs) you know, and uh, because right now groups work really, really well. So if you're not utilizing groups, you definitely need to be. And if you're not utilizing groups to find your perfect audience and using them strategically, I'm going to give you some tips for that. Basically, you can go back to your ideal reader profile, which you should have already created, and you can find several key items about that ideal reader. So the example I'm giving kind of in the blog post is, say your ideal reader is a mom and she likes to read and she has grown children, they're out of the house. Um, You may have some more details, probably, if you fill out my guide, because it's really long. But those are three important keys that could help you find those ideal readers. So you can search for mom groups on Facebook, book reading groups, and groups for empty nesters, and join a couple of each. And then you kind of just hang around. (laughs) And I know that sounds a little weird, but some of these things are a little weird. They're kind of researchy. They're helping you get to know your people. Even if you're not bringing people back, it's helping you write better for them because you're seeing what they talk about, the questions they ask, the links they post, the things that are interesting to them. Now, the thing about groups is I see so much group smarminess and it makes me crazy. And it makes moderators of groups and admins of groups really crazy too, for the most part. And I'm in a few sharing groups on Facebook where the whole point is you drop a link And people can go in there and find things that are relevant to share that week. So like if you're filling up your Hootsuite or Buffer and you're scheduling on Facebook, you can take those posts and it's like relevant to topic. Like there's a parenting one I'm in and a food one. So that's great. And that's all that's for. It's not for community. It's not for anything else. It's not smarmy because those are the rules of the group. But most groups have very strict rules about promotion. And Somebody just asked about this in my Facebook group. I think Mary Dennis, who is a great WordPress guru and has a fantastic group on WordPress stuff. It's fantastic. So uh, you can find her. I don't have her exact. Let's see if I can find her. Okay, she's just marydennis.com. M-E-R-R-I-D-E-N-N-I-S.com. So she's great with WordPress and you can find her Facebook group as well through her site. And she has some really great stuff. But she was asking, you know, how do we promote things when we're in these Facebook groups. And in in my group, we have a a no self-promotion policy. We do have share threads every week, which have great content. And then people can go schedule out their buffer and things. 
And the reason I do that is because you'd be shocked at how many posts I delete where somebody joins the group and immediately just drops a link to their book. And it's just gross. Like nobody wants to know about your book if they have no idea who you are. There's no context for it. There's no relationship. I don't like that. So most group admins are like that. And some of them are like that because they also, I hate to say this, but they kind of don't want their people to uh, springboard off their group and do things. Now, I would love for my members to springboard and become more successful than I am because they're learning and growing. That would be awesome. I'm happy for people to do that. But some group admins, they will have like a, you can't share your Facebook group. And they have like a little disclaimer about why, but I really think we all know it's because they want their Facebook group to be better. So you have to go in and play by the rules and you have to really pay attention to, you know, what's going on in the group. You have to pay attention to the rules And also, not just because you don't want to get in trouble with the admin, because you don't want to be kind of a jerk. You know, you don't want to be that person that drives into a group and then just shares your book link everywhere. So you need to think about that. So you can search in Facebook. There's actually a a tab to search groups, and you can find tons of relevant groups. Go in there. Listen to what people are saying. Join conversations. If it's appropriate, a lot of times you can leave links and comments. So if someone's asking for help and you have a perfect blog post, Don't just drop the link, talk to them, and then you can leave a link as long as that's allowed. And most groups will allow it. I think there's a few groups I've left where they're just so crazy strict that it just seems like it's very obvious that they don't want anyone else to use the group in any way. But I think a good group has give and take. So that's what I want my group to be. So Facebook groups are a really great way. There's a Facebook group for everything. In fact, I've even thought about making a Facebook group for people who are in too many Facebook groups because that's me. So Twitter A lot of people hate Twitter. I love Twitter. I don't use Twitter as much as I used to, but it's a fast and easy way to connect with people. I don't get a ton of traffic from it. I know some people do, which is awesome. I never have. And I don't know that I ever will. I do find some people that find me through Twitter and go to my blog, but for the most part, it's not my big refer. It's usually third or fourth. And I mean like a distant, distant third or fourth. But my use of Twitter is not about getting people back to my blog. It's about finding people and talking to them. And often that does get them back to your blog. You can optimize your profile. And really, you should do this on any platform. But Twitter, they allow you to have a link, but you can also put a link in your little bio. So I have two links on there. And what you can do is you can have links to relevant things. You can have a link that goes right to your sign up. You can have a link that goes to your Facebook group, if that's something. And then no matter what you're sharing, even if it's links to other people, if you have a great bio and you have some links in there, then people may visit you from there. But Twitter is really a great place to find your audience because you can go and say, okay, I am I would consider myself like so-and-so blogger or so-and-so writer. I'm going to go follow them, which you probably do already if they're somebody you really like and you think they're like you. And then you're going to see who they follow and follow interesting people that they follow. And then you're going to go and follow the people that follow them, because those are your ideal readers, right? If they are following someone who is similar to you, then they may want to follow you as well. So that's where you can find some people there. A lot of people will follow back, back, not everybody. You can really get people's attention if you follow them and then maybe respond to a fact in their bio. I have a fact in mind about how I love the Oxford comma. And it's amazing to me that little nugget really does get people. And I constantly, when I go to like a Twitter chat or new followers find me, they will remark on the Oxford comma. So have something in your bio people can kind of attach to and sink their teeth into that's maybe a little bit unique. And then do the same for them. Respond to a tweet. Don't just retweet them. Reply to something. Ask a question. Talk about their bio. And that's a good way to get talking to people. And eventually that talking will turn into audience members. Twitter chats are also fantastic. There's the Twitter Smarter podcast with Madeline Sklar that I love on Thursdays. I think it's noon central time. And Twitter chats, I put a link in there that will tell you all about them. I can't even begin to start on them here, but it's basically where for like an hour of a set time every week, people all talk using the same hashtag. And it's crazy. It's fast and furious, but it's a great way to get to know people and get more followers. Amazon reviews. Now, This is a really fun way to entertain yourself because Amazon reviews are sometimes crazy, but you can go and search for similar genres if you're an author, see what people are saying in the reviews. When I wrote my email lists made easy book, I went and looked at any other email books on there and saw what people said was missing. I read the negative reviews. Now, this is more research tool to help you build, but you can also connect with people on there. You can sometimes see profiles, sometimes people have emails or other links to their blogs or other places that you can reach them. So you can be a little bit more aggressive and 
email somebody if they leave their email address open for you to do that. Now that might weird them out. So that's not probably something I would use, but you can. And people should know, you know, if they're making that public on there, that it may mean that they get contacted. So reading Amazon reviews could help. Goodreads is not my favorite place to spend my time, but on Goodreads, you can find, again, books like yours or, uh, you know, readers that are for certain groups. They have groups in Goodreads. And you can really do a lot of digging and find a lot of people who actually love to read and they hang out on Goodreads. If you haven't already heard of Wattpad, it's W-A-T-T-P-A-D. This is a place where writers will release their work chapter by chapter for free for readers that are on Wattpad. And it's kind of like a mix of a social platform and a content creation platform. But many people have found a lot of success there. Um, I put up a short story, but I'm more literary of a writer and no one really read it. And so I think it's a lot more for like genre fiction and things like that. But I I know some people who've had some great success there and have found real readers and then published a book and had people buy it too, even though it's free chapter by chapter on Wattpad, people still went and bought the book. So sharing your work for free may not be for everybody, but it's a really great place to go hang around, see what people are reading, see what they're talking about. And it's a place where readers go. So it's a good place to find them. Now, I already talked about blogs back in the day um, when how you used to be able to just write and people would read it. Well, people also used to comment and they do still comment, but it's just not what it used to be. So commenting is not dead, but it's not at all what it used to be. People are way more likely to engage on a Facebook post if they happen to see it and leave comments there than actually going to a blog and doing the whole like enter your email address and your blog name and click I'm not a robot. People just don't do that anymore as much. However, you still can comment. And a lot of bloggers that I love and admire and would like to be like still have a ton of comments on their blog. You can read what people are saying and asking. You can talk to other people in the comments. You could, and sometimes that gets a little bit weird. And I have an example in the uh, in the post of a basically smarmy comment somebody left that was like, great content. You can find more on my blog. And I was like, no, that's not, that's not really how it works. But you can see who's commenting click over to their profile, see if they have a blog, you can go leave a comment there. It it still can be a way to connect with people that you can actually do that. A lot of these, you may be realizing, take some time. And that's part of life, you guys. I didn't say this was easy, but I'm giving you ideas here. Product Hunt. Now, this site is not for everyone. I feel like it works more for sort of businessy people and entrepreneurs, startups, but it's a great place to submit your book your blog post or podcast episode, you could actually submit a podcast episode. And and the way Product Hunt works, you're not really allowed to ask for help. Although I keep getting emails from people asking me to vote up their things. And I respond saying that's not allowed. Stop emailing me. However, people can give it a thumbs up or thumbs down, but it's a way for new people to find you. And I did have something get featured on Product Hunt and it got a lot more traffic because they liked the product. I think it was my free blog planner, which was epic. So Product Hunt emailed me and said, hey, we're featuring this. And I didn't see a ton of traffic from it, but I did see some. And it may be a new place for you. So it's a site to check out. Now, you have to get permission from somebody to actually post on Product Hunt. So you kind of have to go in for a little while and do thumbs up and thumbs down. And or I don't know that they have thumbs down. I don't spend a lot of time on Product Hunt secret. Um, but you could go on there and look around and see what people have and be kind of interactive and then ask for Uh, people to recommend you to be someone who can actually put out content. Another one is Medium. And I really love going to Medium because there's always interesting things to read. It's kind of, it was made by the creators of Twitter. And so it's kind of like a conglomeration or conglomerate of blog posts from different people in different places. Now it is a place where you can actually forget about duplicate content and not worry about it and actually put your whole blog on Medium as well. Some people have left their blogs and are just on Medium. I would not recommend that, but I have definitely before taken a whole blog post from Creative Writing, copied and pasted it and stuck it up in Medium. And Google knows well enough that this is not the scrapey, gross kind of uh, duplicate content. And so they really kind of leave it alone. So this is somewhere that you can publish and people can find it. People are more social there. They do leave comments, they leave hearts, they highlight things that they liked in your article so that other readers can see them. So it's kind of a unique space to hang out and really can be fantastic for building a community and finding new readers. I leave a link in the show notes to kind of a guide to help you get started on Medium if you have not gone over there before. 
The last sort of big platform I want to talk about is in person. And yeah, I know in person. This is one that I kind of go back and forth on because I'm an introvert, but I love to be social. It just exhausts me afterwards. And I need like a day to catch up after spending a day with people. But uh, going in person, you can actually really make connections and form a deeper bond than you can online. Now, this is not a way to get thousands and thousands of followers, clearly. But again, what are we after? We're after ideal readers. We're not after necessarily just numbers. And if you are, that's great. This may help you, but this is not maybe the episode talking about that for you, especially not in person. You're not going to get thousands. But you can go to local meetups. There's tons. I made the mistake of signing up for some info on meetup, which is just, I think, meetup, one word, dot com. It's now weekly. I get all these emails about all the meetups I'm missing and don't have time to go to. You could also create your own meetup, which is free. Um, And then you could, or you could go like your local library. Sometimes you can say, hey, I'd like to offer a free class on blogging, on writing, on publishing a book, on getting started with WordPress. And then do it at your local library. You can promote it. They will promote it. Um, You know, ask around and see what you can do. But connecting with people in person is a really great way to make deeper, stronger connections with your ideal people. There's a lot more platforms I'm not mentioning But basically every platform, you can do a similar thing. You can do a search for keywords, a search for hashtags, a search for types of users. Look at the people who follow or like a certain group or page and then go follow them and connect. You know, there's lots of groups on LinkedIn, Google Plus. You can go to Instagram, Reddit, StumbleUpon and more. Um, But any platform that you can go to, you just want to be searching for those targeted people, joining conversations, not being gross and icky. You want to find natural ways to bring them back to your blog. And again, this is a lot of work. It's not necessarily fast. It's not necessarily going to get you thousands, but it may get you your target people. Now for tools, I have some good tools here. Some of them are paid, but allow you to do a few things for free. BuzzSumo is where we're going to start. And this is pricey. It starts at $99 a month. So if that's not in your um, budget, it's not in mine. You can use a few things and search a little bit. You just don't get all the information. They tease you with the information you could get, but you can use it to search for, you know, a blog post, a title. You can look at your blog post. You could look at your competitors and you enter it in there. They'll give you all kinds of information, how many times it was shared, on what platforms it was shared. And that's really interesting things because because some things are more shareable on some platforms and that can help you out and maybe let you know, okay, I'm on Facebook, but I really should be sharing on Twitter instead. That's not where my people live. They don't live on Facebook. They live on Twitter. And you could see that by looking at similar content and how it's being shared and where. I really like FAQ Fox because it's basically a search engine that searches only online forums, places like Reddit or other forums. And so you can search for terms and then see what questions people are asking in forums. And then, you know, a lot of times people say, go to forums, see what people are asking, go find them. But there's so many forums, who has time for that? So FAQ Fox kind of lets you cut through and jump the line and get right in there and see what people are asking and connect with people there. That one's free. SEMrush, S-E-M-R-U-S-H, is also not free, but you do get 10 free searches a day. It's more of a keyword tool kind of search, but you can see what people are searching for. And, um, It's just a helpful way to kind of do some keyword research. And actually, the next couple are related to keywords as well. Um, There's one called Keyword Tool, which I think is keywordtool.io, but I have the link in the show notes. And this kind of helps you kind of see where what people are actually Googling. It's kind of like using Google search, which some people do. You start typing into the search box and see what Google fills in. But this is a little bit more detailed and will help you create relevant content for your readers. And there's also the Google Keyword Planner, which I think used to be the Google Keyword Tool. And I've got a link to a a really informative tutorial that tells you, kind of walks you through how you can actually use that really well. So those are some keyword tools that will help you know what things people are asking so that you can be the answer and write the answer and do that kind of content on your blog. Another big one is Facebook custom audiences. And this is something I'm just diving into. But if you didn't know, you can actually upload your email list to Facebook within the adverts manager. So you have to have a Facebook page in order to do this. And you can upload kind of that spreadsheet, the Excel spreadsheet, the CSV of your email subscribers to Facebook. And then you can actually get a whole ton of information about those people. You can target them with ads. 
You can create a lookalike audience that will say, okay, here's what your, your people already on your list are like. We're going to create a whole new list of people that are just like those people. And then you can create an ad for them or study them and see their behavior. And I put a screenshot of just a tiny bit of my audience, one of my custom audiences on Facebook and the information that they have on there, which is kind of crazy. So that is a really detailed tool because I think you guys all know that Facebook knows everything. I mean, they're constantly tracking everything. That's the whole point, why they want you on there so long. They know the people who are clicking like, they know the people who are clicking share, they know the people who are clicking through to read, they know the people that are clicking through to read and then buy. It's scary, but you can use it to your advantage and that's through the ad manager. And I do have a big long tutorial post that I put in there because again, this may be new to some of you and it's something that's still pretty new to me that I'm working through and trying to figure out. But this is a really helpful way to use all the information Facebook is already collecting to know your people. So to kind of sum up and wrap this back together, I think you'll notice if you were listening that the there's kind of two main ways that you're bringing people back, not just the platforms and tools, but the first way is that you're actually being active and reaching out, going out, trying to talk to people, trying to bring them back to your site by having conversations. That's the first way. And that takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. And I do think it'll be worth it in the end. And as your audience starts to build, I do think that buzz starts to follow. So you're not going to have to do this forever. And as you start to build your audience and your audience grows, you probably won't have to keep doing this. Now you should every now and then, like you don't want to be the people who get too big and just kind of rest on what they have because you'll get stagnant. I do think this is good to do, but you're probably going to have to do it more in the beginning and it takes some time. So that is going back out and finding people and then bringing them back to your site by not being gross. And that's where I left an example of the gross smarmy comment. So don't do that. Don't be a jerk. No one wants to come read your blog if you're a jerk. So the second way is researching and creating the content that are going to bring back your ideal readers. And so the other part of that is some of these things like the keyword tools and the suggestions I made, like going and reading Amazon reviews are about research that will help you know what your ideal audience wants from you. So you can actually create that content. And then when you're going out to those other places to bring people back, you already have created it. You've already answered those questions and you have an answer prepared because you've been paying attention to what people ask. So those are kind of the two main ways. You can use platforms and tools both to go where your people are and then to create the kind of content they want and have it waiting for them back at your site or on your email list. I hope this four-part audience series has been helpful to you. It's a whole lot of information. It's the kind of thing where you do it and then you come back and do it again and then again and again because you're always revisiting your why. You're always revisiting your ideal audience and you're always going back to study those analytics to see who's actually reading your blog. What are they reading? What are they actually interested in? Because often we're surprised and we find that people are interested in things that we didn't know they were interested in. And then we're going to constantly be going out to find new people. We're going to be researching and staying on top of things. So it is a lot. But if you're finding your ideal audience, if you're finding those targeted readers who are just the right people for you, you're going to find more success from that because you're creating the content they want. When you write a book, you already have raving fans who are going to appreciate it. Now, maybe I'll do a follow up. Maybe that'll be what I do before we do the year long of kind of how to treat those people to create a fantastic community. So that may be what we do next is kind of a follow-up. So you've got your ideal audience, then what do you do with them? And it's a lot of rules like don't be a jerk. So we'll do that next week. And then we'll get into kind of a celebration of podcasting for a year and some months, but getting to 52 episodes. And then I'm going to go back through the business to blogger podcast episodes, which are fantastic. So do you have questions, comments? Do you need a bunch of those links that I mentioned and throughout? You need to head over to creativewriting.com forward slash 050 for episode 50. And again, if you want to subscribe, it's creativewriting.com forward slash subscribe. And our Facebook community is creativewriting.com forward slash community. So I hope to see you in there talking and not being smarmy. A big thank you as always to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the lovely music to this show. And she's actually someone I want to have come on pretty soon and talk about songwriting and what it takes to kind of make it through life. I mean, I met her in college and now she has a teenage daughter and, you know, has been making it as a musician and just kind of what that life is like because 
man, you know, balancing, if any of you guys are trying to make a living with your creative work, it can be really tough to balance sort of the money aspect and the creative aspect. So I want to have Jasmine on sometime to talk with her. So all that said, I hope you go out. I hope you find your perfect audience, bring them back to your site, and then snuggle up and make a bunch of raving fans in a non-creepy way because maybe snuggling up sounds a little creepy to them. But in any case, I hope you have an inspired week. Oh,